Today's study in the book of Isaiah is our 11th study, and it brings us to chapter 17, verse 1. And Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. An oracle concerning Damascus. See, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. The enemies of Damascus will completely destroy the city. And it says in verse 2, the cities of Aurora will be deserted and left to flocks, which will lie down with no one to make them afraid. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim and royal power from Damascus. The remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the Israelites, declares the Lord Almighty. Syria, whose big city was Damascus, and Ephraim, which refers to Israel north, will both lose their defenses, according to the word of God. Verse 4, <clears throat> In that day the glory of Jacob will fade, the fat of his body will waste away. You know, the people of Israel were very proud of themselves, but when it comes time for God to act, Israel will lose her greatness. 5. It will be as when a reaper gathers the standing grain and harvests the grain with his arm, as when a man gleans heads of grain in the valley of Rephium. Yet some gleanings will remain, as when an olive tree is beaten, leaving two or three olives on the topmost branches, four or five on the fruitful boughs, declares the Lord the God of Israel. God says that when he is finished punishing his people, there will only be a few left, like the few stray olives hanging on a branch after the tree has been harvested. Verse 7, In that day men will look to their Maker and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. In the end, God's people will realize that their bad, the bad that they are enduring, is God punishing them for their sin. And when they finally figure that out, they're going to start obeying God. Verse 8, They will not look to the altars, the work of their hands, and they will have no regard for the Asherah poles and the incense altars their fingers have made. Asherah was a female god that the Canaanites worshipped, and the Israelites, when they had backslidden away from God, got into that worship of Asherah. Verse 9, In that day their strong cities, which they left because of the Israelites, will be like Places abandoned to thickets and undergrowth, and all will be desolation. Israelite city will be empty when God judges them, just as they had become empty when God judged the Canaanites before Israel took possession of the land. Verse 10. You have forgotten God, your Savior. You have not remembered the rock, your fortress. God had been Israel's rock. In other words, he had been their security when they had been loyal to him, but Israel forgot about that. Last part of verse 10, Therefore, though you set out the finest plants and plant imported vines, though on the day you set them out you make them grow, and on the morning when you plant them you bring them to bud, yet the harvest will be as nothing in the day of disease and incurable pain. God tells Israel that because they have rejected him, they will plant their gardens and protect them, but disease will strike and their gardens will die. 12 on, or no, excuse me, verse 12. Oh, the raging of many nations. They rage like the raging sea. Oh, the uproar of the peoples. They roar like the roaring of great waters. Verse 13, Although the peoples roar, like the roar of surging waters, when he rebukes them, they flee far away, driven before the wind like chaff on the hills, like tumbleweed before a gale. Great armies of powerful nations are very intimidating. But when God shouts at them, 
they run and hide. It is better to have God on your side than powerful people. It is better to be right with God if you are a nation than have a very powerful army. Because if God is judging because of sin, he can take care of that powerful army and anything else that that nation trusts in in a hurry. 14. In the evening, sudden terror. Before the morning, they are gone. This is the portion of those who loot us, the lot of those who plunder us. <clears throat> the enemies of God's faithful cities will lose in the end. They may cause trouble for a while, but before long, they will be gone. And it's not just the faithful Israelite cities, but it's just a good principle, a general truth. The enemies of God's faithful people will lose in the end. Chapter 18. Woe to the land of whirling wings along the rivers of Cush. Now, southern Egypt today and northern Sudan formed the area called Cush, and God is going to prophesy against the land of Cush. In verse 2, he says, which sends envoys by sea and pepperous boats over the water. Go, swift messengers, to a people tall and smooth-skinned, to a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers. And the people in the land of Cush had smooth skin, unlike a lot of people in a lot of countries back in those days, they show, they shave the, the hair off of their face and their head, and, um, and so that's why God calls them smooth skin. But uh, Cush had sent messengers to Israel south, the land of Judah, and invited them to join their defense of the big power of the day, which would have been the Assyrian Empire. But God tells those messenger, messengers to go back home. Go back to Cush. And, you know, Israel needs more than a military alliance to keep them safe at this point. They need to get right with God because that's the only thing that's going to provide them the protection that they need. In verse 3, All you people of the world, you who live on the earth, when a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it. And when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. God says, listen, all you people who live on earth. Verse 4, this is what the Lord says to me. I will remain quiet and will look on from my dwelling place like shimmering heat in the sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. God says he's going to remain calm. A lot of turmoil on earth, a lot of turmoil in the Middle East, God says, but I'm going to remain calm. You know, trouble between nations doesn't affect God. Nevertheless, when the time comes for him to do something, he's going to act, and no one will stop him either. Verse 5, for before the harvest, when the blossom is gone and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he will cut off the shoots with pruning knives and cut down and take away the spreading branches. They will all be left to the mountain birds of prey and to the wild animals. The birds will feed on them all summer, the wild animals all winter. God says before the new grapes appear, the powerful army of Cush will be destroyed. God will judge Cush by using other nations to destroy their army. God uses one nation against another nation to bring about his will. Verse 7. <clears throat> At that time, gifts will be brought to the Lord Almighty from a people tall and smooth skin, from a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers. The gifts will be brought to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord Almighty. And so the time is coming, says God. When wicked people, wicked people like those from Cush, will wake up and start worshiping the Lord God. And that time is the church age, which we are in today and have been in since Jesus Christ died on the cross. People from all over the world are turning to Jesus Christ. 
and we'll pick it up in chapter 19 next time. Until then, so long, everyone.